If you love what we do, then please consider supporting Cryptfail on Patreon. Your support helps us grow and to create more content more often. And now, on with the show. Is, is yep. the door open again? Alright, so Terence is going to walk through, uh, gently pulling the other two in behind him. And he's like, Mala, we're here. And you walk in, and you see a skeleton is sitting on the sofa, and there is a laptop open on a table in front of it, and the head clicks as it turns to look at you, and it goes... It hisses at us? Yep, yep, it hisses. <laughs> it's okay, Cypher. <laughs> Wrong channel oh. to roll. Damn it. <laughs> Cypher, it's okay. Cypher's let go of both of your hands. Terrence <laughs> does not let go of Cypher's hand. Oh, okay. So she tries to dart away. <laughs> Cypher's trying to <laughs> run away. Contested strength roll. <laughs> is this contested strength? It, I'm joking. This Do you want to roll for this? I will roll for this. Cypher is significantly um, smaller than Terrence. That's true. <laughs> I mean, I've also got her other hand, and I assume I would still be holding on to it, too. Yep, so the, she's really struggling to try and get away. Just, she just <laughs> Terrence will, like, place himself bodily in between her and the skeleton and go, it's okay. And Marla walks in. Oh, hi, Terry. So you're Dylan? What the hell? Seriously? How many times have I told you, you can't come in here and use my laptop? No, I don't care if the Wi-Fi is garbage in the graveyard. You made more than enough money over Halloween doing the haunted house gig. Don't be lazy. Get a better connection with it. Now shoo. Shoo! He gets up and starts shuffling his bits of his long coat and that's dripping. Come on, man. Dropping bits of death everywhere? You know that's so hard to get out of my carpet. Go on. Go on. Get. Get. Seriously. Tu n'écoutes jamais. Tem que dizer três ou quatro vezes por semana. Não deixe cair a morte no meu chão. Limpa de primeiro. Pega um novo casaco. Pendura numa rua quando está coberto de aura. Terence starts shuffling the girls towards the the kitchen and and away from the hissing skeleton. <laughs> Named what's his name? How the Dylan. Fuck, Dylan. <laughs> how the fuck can it hiss? It's got it's no It's safer. Tongue. Cypher, it's okay. He's leaving. It's fine. What the hell were you looking at? That's not right, Dylan. Dylan, that's not right. <laughs> she closes the laptop. <laughs> <sighs> Those skeletons. I don't know what to do with them. They're like children and pets. I mean, you could always salt your doorways. <sighs> they are unbelievable. Just pretend they can't hear you. So, how can I help you? Well, uh... Terrence kind of lifts the, the suitcase box he's got, and he puts it on the kitchen table. And she comes over and puts coffee in front of each of you, and it's been made with heavy cream, and there is a really cool skull face floating in from the shape of the cream. Ah, huh, cool. Oh, you've been taking barista classes. That's awesome. Terry? I am awesome. Coffee is the fundamental essence of the universe. Might as well make something pretty with it. Seems so. That's that's art right there. Oh, um, small request. Do you have any whiskey? And she opens a cupboard and there's some whiskey. Uh, some for our frightened girly here. Might calm her down. And she passes it to Ren. Who will pour some into Cypher's coffee? You gave it to the wrong person. Ren doesn't know how much alcohol to put in coffee. J- just pour some. Mm-hmm. Uh, Terrence gently reaches one finger over and kind of presses down on the neck of the bottle for a little bit longer than Ren would have otherwise, and then lets go. Just on the corner of the cup so it doesn't mess up the art. Mm. Should I try it? An Irish coffee? If you want. Yeah, I don't know. It'll put hairs on your chest. I don't know that I want that. Terrence takes the whiskey bottle and he pours, like, 
a third of a shot in Ren's cup. Okay. And Marla walks into the other room and then comes back with a leather leather bound book. Well, while you were away, I was doing a little bit of research. Firstly, the language. Well, I kept having this feeling that this thing was focusing its power inward, back on itself, which is unusual. They nearly always are focusing outward. As I played with that riddle, it made me think it was trying to keep something within. The language itself is very old. And those two symbols, the first one, when I looked at it originally, roughly translates as 12, and the second has 11. And it seems that they're all connected to a language. That's Hermetic, and something called Prisca Theologia, which was an alternate deity, a very old ideology, alchemy, astrology, theology. There were very old ideas and ideals all wrapped together. It started as good, and somewhere I think a demon was able to insert itself into the mythology and corrupt it. And I also found the cult of Kraken was part of a large cabal called the Penumbra. Know what a Penumbra is? Um... No, I haven't. It's it's familiar, but I haven't been reading Latin a whole lot lately. It is a shaded outer area of a shadow. Funny you say that. How many shadows attacked us last night? Um, a bunch. At least five? I don't remember. There were a lot. Like ten, maybe? Eleven? When we went to go do this job to deliver this artifact to the the White Brothers. A bunch of shadows poured out of the woodworks and they got our employer and they dusted him. Hmm. She gets up and she goes and comes back with a, another old looking leather bound book. Hmm. This is sort of a uh monster manual the infernal encyclopedia of unpleasant creatures it's called written by victor karnston quite some time ago he's a bit of an idiot but he does minder his way to a conclusion in the end shadows exist where the light does not shine and the dark is darkest from the trails that no one has ever been they do not look they will not see and can see the forests for the trees well thanks for that victor imbecile this is more useful Shadows come from the cracks between reality, sometimes called upon by powerful mage, sometimes split by a mage into himself or herself into pieces, becoming lesser and lesser each time, but most often tied to a demon. Can be reasoned with. They tend to sound like whispers when they communicate. Not pick up anything, but will suck your life force if they touch you. Difficult to destroy and they dislike sunlight. They are essentially unlife, which is why they can drain you of yours. They're all the doubt, lack of confidence, sorrow, embarrassment, self-loathing. All those elements of ourselves that we like the least. It is the genesis of these creatures' DNA. I also found the quote, Richard the Lionheart tried to eradicate occult orders in his time. And when was shadows tonight have struck more terror to the soul of Richard than the substance of 10,000 soldiers. All right, that idol thing has one of those shadow creatures in it. The shadows are the servants, deadly minions to do thy master's bidding. Of hell they may be, but they are not worthy of the effort required to trap something in that idol. There is something in that idol, Terry. Something that wants to escape. Well, if it, if the symbols carved on the statue mean 11 and 12, does that not mean that there's 1100 12 of them in there. Well, the number was descending like a spiral staircase. Like that. Don't know why. Seems ominous. Oh. Oh no. What? Does Does that idol function as a kind of holding cell like a like a pocket dimension? Like a prison. Uh could um could in in theory a practicing street musician say accidentally pluck a prisoner out of there with a summoning circle there was a lot of power behind this enterprise how did terry have two suppositions to do one a being was put in there 
and one which very much desires to escape at this time. Possibly voluntarily. The other option is a being was imprisoned there, trapped. It is possible that the circle only had the power to contain it as long as they could. In this case, 4,000 years, which is quite a long time, I admit. When the markings reach zero, whatever is within could be absconding. And it won't be pleasant. Very good. Mages don't really do this sort of thing. No. Um, something else we came here to talk about. You, you remember those months when, when I stayed here with you after the fire? Of course I do, Terry. Cypher here has seen a lot. Uh, she's not coping well. Do you have any advice for her, for us, to help her get through it? And she goes over to Cypher and gently <coughs> touches her chin and looks slightly hypnotically into her eyes. Would Cypher like to resist or is she just going to let her scan her? <laughs> <sighs> oh, what the hell? My microphone wasn't working. I was like going <laughs> <laughs> and I wasn't picking it up. It's too high pitched. Yeah, as soon as she's, as soon as she's like touched her underneath the chin she's like <laughs> she's like her earphones are blasting music at the moment, so she's just looking up at Marla. Like she's got her head down, but she's like looking up. <laughs> Ren's still hanging onto her hand, and your hand's probably getting very sore at the moment. <laughs> That's fine. Strength well on Ren's hand. <laughs> yeah, see if it's crushed. <laughs> Resisting what? Uh, she's scanning you, essentially. Well, she doesn't understand what's going on, so... Like, there's a faint touch on your mind, but it's not aggressive, it doesn't hurt. Okay. But you don't you don't quite know what it is because... She's remembering... You're not a mage, so for you, it's it's like memories are sort of coming... Yeah. Uh, so, like, all the memories that of, like, um, Sally and the guy and Mr. Book and... Yeah, yeah any, essentially anything, like... Yeah, it's just it's so. I mean, for you, it's hard to like Terry would know if it was happening to 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 him, or he'd be he could sort of go, okay, I know what she's doing. Yours just mm. it's slightly distracting because it's sort of like the best way to describe the scan is like when you're just sitting there doing whatever, and you suddenly get a remember something that you're not thinking about specifically at that time. It just sort of pops into your head. That's sort of happening a lot. There's a lot of different different things, but it's really quick. It's sort of not trying because. Although you don't know what she's doing, she's sort of trying to get to the root of what's... Or at least not necessarily the root, but she's trying to find out what's in in your head. So there's a lot of... Um, yep. But for you, it's yep. a lot of I, thoughts are just sort of popping one from the next sort of thing. So it depends mm-hmm. if that distracts you from anything else then you probably wouldn't resist because you've got all these thoughts going and, and Cypher's be just like from one thought to the next. But how far back she yep. can go in that, I'll, I'll allow you to resist if you want to resist. I will tell you exactly how far. Oh, I'm not telling Emily. I'm telling you. <laughs> Wait, what? Oh, I, was accident- I, was, I started typing to you. Um, oh. <laughs> past that, yeah, past that, she might, you know, she'd probably have okay. to be a little bit more forceful. Well, that's still a decent amount of time. So she sort of... And then she sort of lets you go after a few seconds and she sits back down. There's a maelstrom of dark beats and an inequality of light. Your friend is not exactly untouched by the evils of the world. And she drinks too much. I got that much. Yeah. She is running, figuratively speaking. She is trying to escape herself her deeds and those she has witnessed and she hasn't found the safety of the garden gate i will say in the last couple of years since finding mr fennyman and now you and ren that is probably the most stable environment she's had in many a year Ants looks like kind of horrified and he's like our lifestyle far more than the cadence which existenced for her before that time dancing with the employment of shadows offers choice of loss rather than warmth of gain that's where the money is well ambition's debt is being paid in cipher 
that too. Like peering through a downpour, Cypher's drinking is trying to place a veil over the pain. Only, its only outcome can be one of protracted failure. That crutch has many cracks and is only bidding its time to break. Well, um, as, as much as I'd like to encourage her to slow down a little bit, I don't think AA meetings would help her at this point. This girl needs help, but the drinking is a symbol, not the language. What kind of help? I mean, Terrence, like, raises his hands and looks at them and then looks at Mala. I'm, I'm not a doctor. I'm not even a medical practitioner in the magical sense. Her view of time is like a raft lost at sea. It's drifting. How she sees time is being shaped by the memories. The dreams, the past bringing itself to the present. The present being pushed away like a friend no longer wanted. She does not know how to defend her battlements against the evils that she has experienced and are now bashing against the castle defenses. So she fled, but eventually the past reaches the present. All right, so we need to figure out what she needs to cope. What I needed was a weird cemetery retreat for three months, or what I needed anyway. Um, any insight onto what she might need? He kind of looks at Cypher and then realizes that she can't hear anything he's saying. He didn't notice her put <laughs> on her headphones, really. And he kind of frowns a little bit but doesn't do anything to try and make her listen. She needs a potion, if you will. A concoction of environment that is built on belief of family. A drop of a bard where she can express herself. Talk. Not of a mundane prattle, but of the shadows that linger just out of sight. I am willing to do what I can, but it is different for Cypher than it was for you. You are a magical practitioner. There's a myriad of tasks that you were to do. Focuses, meditations, practice, to focus your mind away from the trauma. The library could be cataloged. There are more than 5,000 books and tunes covering the full spectrum of magic and the occult. But she's a bottle that is preparing to shatter. No, I have an idea though. What's your idea? Well, Cypher's very techy, right? Uh huh. Well, we could do a group project. We could build a virtual library. But Cypher's not going to want to spend time here. Well, that's why it's virtual. Uh. Like, like for her, she could do a deep dive to do it. And, like, our equivalent would be, like, one of those crazy VR headsets. Or it could be a house. Or, or a mansion. It could... It could be literally anything, we would just build it together. Same kind of exercises, different environment. It kind of shrugs at Mala. Hmm. 5,000 books of the Imperium of the Unknown. And I'm sure she'd have fun putting all the security measures in place that nobody could get in without proper say-so. Terrence kind of taps Cypher on the shoulder. Yep. Yeah. Cypher's looking at Terrence. He points at his ears. Cypher's looking at Terrence's ears. <laughs> He rolls his eyes and he points at her headset. You can't... Uh, there's no point in saying you can't hear us because you can't hear us. <laughs> she takes off a... Uh, with her left hand, she takes off a... Uh, slides the one side of the headset um, behind her left ear. How do you feel about some therapeutic virtual reality sorting? Therapy? No. Therapeutic. Building a virtual reality version of the library. Uh, what library? Huh? 5,000 books. That's about, that's about, what, a terabyte and a half? Mm. Um, as far as creating assets? Or are we talking about putting in the virtual reality, the environment, the books, and all the information contained within the box? Yes. That one. And the security to not let anybody just wander in because they want to. Oh, and then security mm -hmm. on top mm -hmm. of that. Yep. And we have a remote access or local access? Probably just local access. So local access will make things a lot easier. Yeah. But the information within the box, 
that's gonna take like forever. Well, I mean, we can help. Maybe it's not a time-sensitive project. It's something we would do to relax on our off days. You know, for those times when we have six weeks of time between jobs. Hmm. Always. Oh. Yeah. I suppose I got too much time to think. I think that's the point. Terence oh, I forgot looks to. confused and worried at that sentence. Oh, Marla. Maybe Marla can say something about that. I have one last question for you, Marla. Yes, Terry? Do you know if there's any boarding houses near here? Looking for a place to reside? Several in the area. It seems that skeletons and the undead are not elements that raise property values. For who? Well, for me, and for either of you two, if you want to join in. Hmm. My closet's getting a little bit big for the rest of my apartment, so. And I mean, if I could rent out an entire house, if I had some roommates to help me pay the rent, it would be cheaper for all of us in the end, wouldn't it? Mm, I can't. That's fair. See? This cypher gets, has a grin on her face. What cypher? You are a vampire. <laughs> I'm uh, not a vampire cypher. Why does not being able to share a house with Terry make me a vampire? For reasons. For, re- for reasons. What reasons? Right, then, cypher, does that mean you're going to be my roommate? Otherwise, you're a vampire? Does it have a secret uh, a secret she secret needs her space. secret room we can definitely build one um customizable sh- computer secret room behind a bookcase sure I mean it's not like I need the space but I just need the the space for my computer room sure and I can... You don't need the space. You just need the space. Guarantee that toys. there'll be chicken for you to raid from the fridge instead of the neighbor's house. Vampire. And Marla leans over and kisses Ren for a moment. She is most definitely not one of the night. She does not taste like one. What do vampires taste like? <laughs> I like how Ren's just like, what just happened? Ash. Ash. Huh. Today is still very confusing. The cipher is looking so confused. <laughs> like, looking at Ren. Looking at Mala, looking at Ren. Terrence grins and I says already told to her I wasn't a vampire. I told you Mala was friendly. <laughs> very friendly, apparently. Terrence chuckles a bit, and he's like, alright. It's not exactly walking distance from, uh, cornerstones, but I have a beautiful new Impala now, Mala. I have an Impala. How did you manage to afford a mortar? It's true. I inherited it. Death. So, in a way, I guess we did get paid? That is a form of currency. I didn't. Cypher, what is it? Can I lick the side of your face? I guess? I... uh, uh. <laughs> You're right. She doesn't taste like a vampire at all. How do you know what a vampire tastes like? Why is this? You think you'd think yesterday would have been weirder than today? What with the whole people disintegrating and then shadow things, and yet today is somehow much stranger. If you're a vampire, you would have tasted like ash. That's what Mala said, but why would you know what a vampire tastes like? Or are you just going off of what she said? Because that's what Mala said. Okay, great. So you thought she was lying? Okay, so the potential scenario where you have to lick my face is that she's telling the truth about what a vampire tastes like, but lying that I taste like ash. Terrence sips his coffee. Grinning. She tastes complicated. Who? Ren is. I am or you are? Uh, Ren? I didn't know if she Obvious, was talking obvious. about Ren or Cypher. <laughs> Obviously, Marla was talking about Ren. You, you dummy. Not complicated. 
You are very complicated. Now that you're not a vampire, I don't know what you are. <laughs> I, I wasn't ever a vampire, to my knowledge. At least she thought I was a nice vampire. Clarence kind of looks down at his coffee and he says, not all of them. Yeah, sorry, Cypher. Not a vampire. And be thankful for the dawn. <sighs> well, now that I know how to tell a vampire from... Well, don't just go licking everybody, Cypher. <laughs> Well, if that's the sure way to tell someone if they're a vampire. You know, I think one of the first books we can work on in the library is the one about vampires. How about that? Cool. There's an entire section, I think, but there's one specifically about how to tell them from other folk. Does it say you should lick them? Probably. But there's other methods as well. Sap is going to be green on a fence. <laughs> I'm glad you're happy now. I have to admit, it is a very unusual technique Cypher uses, and not one I've ever seen used before. You're the one who started it off by kissing. Well, uh, Terrence, Terrence is blushing a little bit because he's, he's read that particular book. He's like, well, you, you know how vampires can be? They, they get all up in, y- in your uh, bedroom. What? <laughs> um, Stakes, crosses, they're not a guarantee for your life, especially the cross. It's not actually the cross that matters, it's the faith behind it. If you don't have faith, it is merely a piece of wood. I could have shown Ren a cross, but being dead, I lost my faith. And I mean, I, I wouldn't have cared much either way. And not all vampires are allergic to garlic. Nor the running water. That has always been a myth. Vampires can travel quite easily when the desire is upon them. It's just today's weird. You ran out of bottled sunlight? We were just outside. I've been in sunlight already. I've been in sunlight, like, all the time. Oh, there's a question. Are there enchantments that can protect a vampire from sunlight? Yes. They have over the eons worked hard to ensure their survival. They are one of the most cunning, powerful, and dangerous villains that ever existed. Far worse in reality than in literature. Well, now that we've determined forever that I'm not a vampire, Cypher will have to come up with some new bizarre theory. Then I'm definitely, definitely not one, because I nearly died yesterday and I was not powerful at all. I'm... Not what I am by choice. So. Makes sense. Is any banshee a banshee by choice? Marla, with a handwriting honed from centuries, writes down the address for Gaswain, a well-known mage in Seattle. She then passes it across the table to Terry. Alright. Uh, just, do you think the White Brothers have the power to keep it locked away and safe? They are very secure, but they would be looking into this as well, having almost been touched by it. Their instinct for survival will be battling their instinct of greed. <sighs> I was really hoping to get at least paid for this one. We can always sell the Impala. No. I mean, it's just I a mean, car. And we've got charge. We've got, the, we've got the stuff in the trunk of the Impala we can send. It's a, it's a big gasling. Gasling. <laughs> and, it, and it's only got two doors. Well, if it's only the two of us rooming in that boarding house, it won't be a problem. Oh, well, that is true. But don't you have to park it on the street? Not if we get that boarding house. Where is a boarding house? It sounds really it's, weird. It's an old style house that the people who own rent out to, to people who cannot afford to buy a house like us. But isn't that what we're doing already? We're just renting places? But you're what? renting separate apartments. Terry's saying you could share a house and split the rent and then you get more space and... I don't know. You could get some chickens or something. For real? Yeah. I don't know. Oh, a boarding house would have a backyard. We'd have to talk to the to the landlord about chickens, but it's possible. We could go there right now if you like. Oh, or I could go home and start packing. <laughs> well, you have to find a place to move to before you pack. 
Oh. <laughs> Don't get ahead of yourself. <laughs> it's nice you're excited, but Terrence, Terrence is chuckling a bit, and he's like, "We could, we could go do that next." Ha ha ha! Sorry, Jim. Um. <laughs> <laughs> what? There is one thing about your friend. Oh, what friend? Cipher. Oh. Her vision is often focused on where she has been and not on where she is going. She expects someone to be there. She is afraid of that thing. She wants both to find and yet not to be found. Huh. That's fair. I could not see beyond that veil. A lot of her mind is on this individual. Terrence looks very seriously from Mala to Cypher and he's like, well, whatever. And whoever it is, I'll be there to help her through it. Cypher's looking over her shoulder. <laughs> Cypher, it's not literal. It doesn't matter. Maybe you'd feel better with some chickens. Well, if we do find a boarding house that is close to here and affordable and allows chickens, I'll have more access to the library, theoretically, and I can get back to proper studying. I could put some decent wards down. The adversary is not a mage, so wards would be effective. I can try and break in and test the locks for you. Let's try and find the place first. Um, Mala, can we leave this in your care until we get some stuff sorted out and figure out who this Giswain person is? And he gestures at the box with the idol in it. You may. Thank you. And he gets up, having finished his coffee. Cypher stands up. Yeah. Ran well, too. Want to go look at that boarding house? It's got to be cheap. It's close to a cemetery. You're going to make Cypher not want to live there. Cypher's eyes are getting a bit wide and worried. Cypher, the cemetery is safe. Very quiet neighbors, Cypher. And I can make you some charms to ward away... Uh, spirits that you don't like, I guess. Mm, oh, um, oh, okay. Terrence shrugs apologetically at Mala. <laughs> she smiles. And and Terrence will uh, hold Cypher's hand again, and they will head out. He's like, "We'll be back." Thank you, Mala. I hope to see you again, when. And she winks, but you get the sense that she's teasing you. <laughs> I'm sure we'll be back. <laughs> Cypher is blank. Very confused. What are you confused Already about? I forgot what happened, eh? Hey. Mala kissed Ren. I know, right? And apparently I taste complicated, whatever that means. It's a hint. It's a hint? A hint about what? <laughs> Obviously what you really are. <laughs> what? Am I? I'm a person, Cypher. Exactly. I'm a human. <laughs> Marla, Marla was giving me a hint. Cypher, I promise you 100% right now I am a human. That doesn't mean you're not complicated. Yeah, but what does that... What, how does somebody taste complicated is all I want to know. I don't know. Well, you tasted fine to me. Thanks. If anything, I'd taste like permanent markers since you licked my well, face. actually, you would taste like uh, makeup <laughs> remover. True. True. Originally, that's what I was going to do. <laughs> Why? Just because I thought... Originally, I was just going to... Just feel your pulse and go, oh, she's got a pulse, she's not a vampire. <laughs> but then I thought, oh, no, but, but she dated a vampire that she didn't know was a vampire, so... To do this, but then she's like, "Yeah, it doesn't taste like one. It tastes tastes like permanent <laughs> marker." But then, in a way, this, but in the same way, the scene was sort of serious, so I didn't go there. I thought, "Okay, you know what? I'll, I'll, I won't." Yeah, but that's sort of originally when I went. Okay, that was the thought. I thought, oh, yeah, I could, like. <laughs> yep, that is yep. complicated. But then Maybe. it was that is very complicated. <laughs> Ren's just having a weird day. Very weird. Very weird two days. Yes, strange two days. <laughs> and this one's somehow stranger, despite there being no weird ghost shadows stabbing. So, um, Terrence is walking down the street in the direction that Mala indicated there was some boarding houses that were uh, open for rent. Yep, and you'd find maybe three different ones of 
most a two bedroom, three bedroom, and they'd all go through a, a local realtor. Right. <laughs> Is it being sold by Dr. Becca? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. <laughs> That means we're about to get a really good deal. Damn. Um. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yep. Because she's an excellent doctor, but a fool of real estate. She bought them near a graveyard that actually has skeletons. <laughs> and now nobody wants to <laughs> buy Skeletons them. that try and leech off other people's Wi-Fi. Yeah, exactly. Yes. <laughs> yeah, leech off my Wi-Fi, you <laughs> bastards. <laughs> <laughs> Cypher is going to have a real problem with uh, Dylan, I think. <laughs> she is. <laughs> uh, like, oh, feck. She's got a... You don't even know what he was watching or looking up. I left it completely ambiguous for a very good yep. reason. Uh, uh-huh. like, I think I think Cypher is going to have a real problem with Dylan, not in the sense that she's going to keep being afraid of him, but just in the sense that she's going to become so exasperated that she's going to stop <laughs> being afraid of the hissing skeleton and be like, get the hell off our lawn! <laughs> you know what I mean? What are you... Oh, that's right. Oh, yeah, the new nemesis. <laughs> the new nemesis Dylan. Is Dylan. <laughs> Dylan. He is the real... The Wi-Fi stiller. <laughs> exactly, I'm about to send you a message. <laughs> he is the actual, like, huge Who? villain for the last adventure. Dylan. Dylan. <laughs> and this just happened right now. Yes, but... Yes, but... Headphones. What? Uh, typity, 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 type. Yep. Mm-hmm. Typing, typing. It was something theology, and I didn't know how to spell it, and I had to write the next thing too quick to ask. Was it the bit that was... Um, Prisca, I think it is. Prisca Theologia yeah. or something? that's it. Pris... Yes, it is. Theologia. I just wrote it how I think it's spelled. All right. Oh, hey, I spelled it right. Excellent. Yeah. <laughs> I knew reading random books on Latin would help me with this game. <laughs> mind you, mind you, the only this. book of Latin I have is Paleolithic Latin, but that's beside the point. I just made my life more complicated with that thing with Cypher right there that I've just been conversing, but whatever. Um, yeah. Cypher, yep, that um, challenge oh, accepted. Oh no, what is happening? <laughs> what is happening? Did Cypher just say challenge accepted out loud? Yep. Yes. Terrence yep. turns around and looks at her. What does he see? <laughs> yeah, what's she doing? She's just looking up into the sky. Challenge Cypher. And she has a quizzical sort of look on her face. Cypher, what's up? Really, what challenge? We have so many challenges right now. You just... Cypher, are you taunting God again? She's got her headphones on. She pulls one to the side. What's that? Are, are you challenging uh, the forces that be? I. Why? Why? Don't do that. That causes trouble. I swear I could have heard chalk scratching just now. Everything's bad enough as is, Cypher. <laughs> it, no, 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 no. No, no it, it's not. It's, it's not bad enough? Chill. Chill. It's, it's, a, it's a hacker thing. Uh, uh, it's a hacker thing to yell... Challenge accepted at the sky. Exactly. I've seen her do it before. I mean, I'm gonna try not to worry about it. Anyway, I've got the number for this uh, Doctor Becca, the realtor. <laughs> Sounds kind of sketchy, huh. but so the, call her up. I, I think we should take the one closest to the That's graveyard. That's a three-bedroom one. Really? It's got you want to live closest to the graveyard. Blue. It's got a huge yard. It would be good for keeping chickens. If I can't live there, I get to help with the chickens. You can of live course. there. No, I can't. That's that's not I've something that we decided. That's something that you decided by no, yourself. No, I didn't decide it. I can't. If I could, I would. If you tell us why you can help with the chickens. She's complicated. Can't tell you. <laughs> And can't move. And can't help with chickens? Can help with chickens. Like you could stop me, I'll break into your house. I'll ward it. It'll turn you into chicken feed. And then you'll help with the chickens. That's fine. (laughs) I'm kidding. Uh, 
We'll figure out your secrets one day, or you'll trust us enough to just tell us. I mean, geez. It's not like we wouldn't help. Can't. Can't. Like, actually can't? Are physically incapable? Uh, don't know about that. Haven't tried. Can't. Could you show up? <laughs> no. What would happen if we just found out on our own, and you had nothing to do about it? I don't know. I try not to think about it. <gasps> you live in a parallel universe. Huh. That is a new idea. I don't know if I like that better or vampire. Um, I keep coming up with these, though. They're pretty good. All right. I, I have a theory. If I'm right, don't say anything. Is another okay. entity of some form of living creature dependent on you? What? I, is there another being who depends on you? Like Cypher? No, She's no, no. Like, like somebody we don't know about who you can't talk about because you can't. I don't know. <sighs> There's lots of people I can't talk about. Heck. Because I don't know most people in the world. Dang it, Ren. If I was right, you were supposed to not answer. Huh? I didn't answer. But what? What? All right. Never mind. Terrence is going to call the number for Dr. Becca, the realtor. A brilliant doctor. What? A doctor selling houses? <laughs> I would like that to be the real estate tagline. A brilliant doctor. Well, the, the for rent board that's in front of this boarding house has a very confused looking woman with a slight frown. <laughs> <laughs> They're not renting it out to carry out experiments on us. No. Is she? <laughs> is she wearing a white cloth? I doubt. That. Well, maybe you'd better check the lease extra carefully, Cipher. Doctor Becca Realty. Hello. Um, I was just wondering if we could book an appointment to see this uh, boarding house beside the cemetery. It's for rent. Yes, of course. Excellent. Uh, when can we? Book a tour. Uh, two o'clock tomorrow. Sounds good. All right. Oh. Uh, hey, 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 Terrence. Uh, Ask her if she's got a doctorate. <laughs> uh, my potential roommate wants to know if you actually have a doctorate. Yes, I do. I am a secretary, so I have a business doctorate. Very nice. That's not a real doctorate. Terrence, like, kind of holds the phone away from Cypher in hopes that Dr. <laughs> Becca didn't hear that. <laughs> to any viewers who have a business doctorate, Adam will take your complaints. The rent's just gone up, Cypher. <laughs> Emily, you're not allowed to be a part of the apologetic department for this one. This is all Adam. Yep. Okay. <laughs> That's fine. I will hey, not I, apologize. I, I, like me, me personally, I have a master of business degree. Um, I I do not support the views of Cipher. I'm going to start adding a disclaimer to the episodes. <laughs> they do not support the views of Cipher. The views of our characters do not reflect the views of our players. Uh, exactly. Probably. Uh, when we say questionable things in our characters' voices. True. Very specifically. Jeez. <laughs> Adam. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. She's not going to let you keep chickens if you annoy her, Cypher. Oh, right. Uh, before I let you go, how do you feel about chicken coops? I would have to check. Pets are okay, but I'm not sure if that falls under pets. Well, it wouldn't be in the house. It would be in the yard. How about cats? Local. Cats um, You can't bring a cat into a house that you're not going to live in unless you're going to live in it. I'm not, but if I... <laughs> Never mind. <gasps> Red wants a kitten. How do you know I don't have one? Ooh. Could we entice Ooh. her to come over if we get a kitten? I think a kitten would be nice. Does Red have a Anyway, uh, sorry, Dr. Becca. Um, We're a part of a local agriculture to bring good things to the... To the, um, 
to the <laughs> section of this city. So chickens would be good. Think about that before we come over tomorrow at two. Thank you. Bye. Eggs. <laughs> We're local farmers, definitely not criminals. Yep. Fresh, fresh eggs. Fresh eggs. Yep. Yep. That's that's and, it. And fresh eggs, not death. <laughs> fresh eggs, no crime. That's our motto here mm-hmm. in whatever this is when called. We're, when we're not doing shadow runs, we're respectable farmers. <laughs> <laughs> don't let the chickens loose in the graveyard to pluck at worms and grubs and things. To graze on the graveyard grass. That would, would be, be a good an amazing idea. idea. Free range graveyard chickens. Yeah. Well, chickens don't really eat grass. They eat bugs and worms and grubs and things. Oh, they'll eat grass. They'll eat mostly yeah. anything. They, yeah. They'll eat mice. Yeah. So we might have chickens. We might get a kitten. I must insist on a rescue, though. I don't want any of those the conditions that those stores keep those poor animals under, I will not support it. Mm. If we're getting a kitten True. from a store, we're stealing it, Ren. I could steal a kitten. You'd have to keep it. I don't know if it would get along with mine. You do have a kitten. <gasps> she has a kitten. Maybe. We know things about you now. Confirmed. Or is it a it's tiger? Canon. It might be a from tiger. the parallel <laughs> universe. That's actually a Terrence doppelganger. Terence has started walking back to Mollus and this universe. House. And he's just like, oh goodness. Um, it's all adding up. Actually, Terence kind of stops partway through, and he's like, I should probably go find out about the car and like what I can do about. Uh, things that are in it that are sellable. If there's any money to be had, I'll split it with you guys. But I'm gonna... How are you gonna... It's got tires. Hmm? How are you gonna, like, transfer ownership to yourself, though, of the Fenneman car? Has <laughs> a guy. Okay. Oh. Cypher. <laughs> Cypher wanted to do it. <laughs> <laughs> well, if Fennyman's guy is having any issues with it, I'm sure Cypher could help. Oh, of course I could help. I, uh... Did my microphone yeah. pick that up? Yes. Yes, yes it did. I, I more sent it to the mechanic <laughs> to fix the window and see about getting a new key and fix the wires I kind of must with. I don't know how much you know yeah. about old cars, Cypher. I'm sorry. Sorry about the window. How much do you know about old cars, Cypher? Well, it doesn't help when the page went <laughs> <to> fresh. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> <laughs> she's go- um, she's looking it up right now. Well, <clears throat> to be honest, I've used to work on cars and tractors and stuff on when I used to be at home. Be at home? Is that what you said? Home. Um, but yeah, how do you know? You know, um, I I get I used to jack cars all the time, so. Um, you know, I'm, I'm 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 not great at them, but you know, um, not in the driving sense. If it, if it had a jack that I could jack into and drive it, yeah, sure. But uh, if if I need to to know how to break into it and hotwire it and and um, you know fix it or you know get it started or if it ran out of fuel, yeah, sure. Change spark plugs, change the carburetor. I know I know how to do all that sort of stuff. I only knew how to hotwire this particular car because it's my favorite car. Aside from that, I only know how to fix a lawnmower. I don't know how to fix anything, so... Well, I'm more boosting things like, you know, cars with a bit of style and class and speed. Terence wants to go back to Cornerstones to find out info about the car. He has talked to Cypher about making her his permanent mechanic for the car. <laughs> I, I was... We were in the middle of that conversation. Uh, yep. Mm, yep. Because she seems really interested and mildly offended that Terry didn't immediately think of her, but Terry had no idea she knew about cars. He didn't know that. 
And he's like, you, you never told me. Oh. How could I have possibly known? Oh, I just thought it was common knowledge that, you know, everyone knew that I used to boost cars well, back in the day. You said you boosted yeah. cars, but you also said you boosted high techy cars that you could, like, plug yourself into. You never said anything about old cars or tractors. That's cool. Well, it's th- the same principle, except it's just less technology. Uh, hence, eh, more boring, I guess. If there's no computer in it, then, it's, you know, it's something that I'd, I'm not normally interested in doing. But, you know, uh, all cars have, you know, to, you know, to some extent, you know, they've all got the same parts, pretty much. It's just that the more advanced ones that I'm used to boosting, I just, you know, I can drive with a computer. Yeah. Well, um, I'm not going to lie. I mean, a grease and an oil change is no different than a grease and an oil change in a new one, except... Um, you know, uh, there's more computers and, uh, you know, uh, sensors and stuff you have to consider. But, yeah, if, if anything, it's a lot easier on the old machines, especially those big impalas, because the the engine bay is just so huge. you got more worm, uh, more area to work in, and, yeah. Yeah, well, my only request is that you don't make any um, big upgrades. So no electric push stud? No. I like my keys. You don't have any keys yet. Well, yeah, but that was specifically requested. So, do you guys want to join me? Yes. Cypher? Uh, to, to do go what? go see if the car is ready. Has keys in a new window. Oh. All okay. right. Terrence is going to call up George. Hello. Hey, George. Can you give us a lift back to Cornerstones? Oh, done? Yeah. Yeah, I can Excellent. do that. Excellent. Thank you. Terrence uh, hangs up and then he's what? like, oh no. What is it? He's going to Mahler's. That's where he thinks you are. Well, he's Terrence isn't oh knowing about that because they're still pretty close to Mahler's. I mean, the boarding house was right beside the cemetery. Um, Terrence is oh knowing about... He's like, um, we're not going to need to call George so much. I mean, I am. Maybe. Well, you could. And I'm sure we would still sometimes anyway. Especially if... Uh, We've been drinking, because drinking and driving is bad. He looks at Cypher. Well, your car's... Technically, your car's kind of known. Yeah, if we want to be sneaky... That's true. We're gonna I don't mean I known wouldn't. as in, oh, it's that. It's just, it stands yeah. out. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't drive it on any, like, surreptitious missions or anything. 67. 67. So, yeah, old... 18 feet of badass. Mm -hmm. (laughs) It is such a cool car, though, seriously. So we're waiting for George. And George doesn't need to worry because we still need covert rides. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm just trying to point out it might not be a good idea necessarily to have the Impala on missions that you don't want to be known. Yeah. Especially (laughs) since we... But not- for all those missions where we do want to be known, well, there's some good. that might not matter. Well, J- you know? J- Jidway's going to put it in his order. Well, we want to have, like, Terrence, Terrence is talking, it's not me talking. He's like, we, we have to build a little bit of a rapport, at least, with our employers that we're, that we're strong and we're tough and scary people who can do stuff, right? Are we strong and tough and scary, though? Heck yeah. Especially with that car. Okay. George. Alright, you be... Oh, there's George. Okay. I'm telling you this, and I don't want you to worry, because we're still going to call you lots for rides to jobs. But we now have a car that we can drive ourselves to meet with the employers so that we look put together. Don't worry, I still can't drive. Well, that's totally fair enough. I still can't drive and I'm not going to be living with them, so it's not like I can just get driven around we either. We pick you up from wherever you decide you want to be picked up from. We have your phone number. Cornerstones. Yeah, see? Put together. <laughs> I'm chauffeuring. Put together some teenage looking girls around it'll be great (laughs) yeah we're super tough and scary and whatever you said well i mean cypher does have a shotgun which she's not allowed to take Mm -hmm. out of the bag in the cornerstones 
No, but if it, it points right. towards tough and scary anyway. There's nothing scarier than seeing a little teenage girl with a shotgun. All right, you be scary, I'll be complicated. <laughs> and I'll be fabulous. It'll work out. Excellent. Well, that sounds like a plan. I can just imagine George shaking his head in the driver's seat. <laughs> He's like, maybe I don't care if I don't have to drive you people. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, but currently, we do need a ride back to Cornerstones, please. Right, you are. Well, Cypher's getting in the taxi. Yeah, so is Ren. Terrence had already gotten in the taxi. That's how he was talking to George, so. <laughs> oh. I, guess, I guess we were. Cypher and Ren were just chatting to each other outside <laughs> on right. the street. Outside. <laughs> 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 so, well, uh, did you realize that that Terrence has gotten in the car? We're still out here. Oh, oh really? Oh, we better get in the car before he gets we annoyed. Get in the car. Yeah. Well, I mean, I have a lot of patience for you two, but I think it might be a hazard that George would just drive off. If I'm asking uh, for a destination, sorry. you two aren't getting in. Sorry, George. And he takes off once everyone's in. <laughs> Cypher, what would you name a chicken? You're going to name them? Hmm. Why not? Well, you, um, they are food. You know that. You could still well, name yeah, them. Yeah, but then it'll be sad. It's like, oh, I'm eating... Well, you could just eat the eggs. You don't have to oh, eat the chickens. Right. Um... Mo- mother clucker oh okay, okay. Mother, if, if mother we clucker. get one that's uh, particularly um princess Leia <laughs> get it Leia yeah got it it's, it's a Leia laying, laying I'm just eggs. gonna let <laughs> got it. and you take care of the naming of the chickens in the fantasy game Mr. Fennyman's chicken was the colonel <laughs> <laughs> and you arrive back at Cornerstones. Thank you, George. Not a problem. Thank you. Teriyaki? Teriyaki? Oh. <laughs> I guess if you do want to eat it. Well, yeah, once they get old enough <sighs> and they're just at that. We can call No, them we're George. not going to name any of the chickens <laughs> George. <laughs> <laughs> that that is where I'm putting my foot down. We're not naming the chickens after anyone we actually know. What about bad people? We could name all the chickens after bad people, and then if you eat them, it's fine. I'm not sure I want to eat any of the bad people that we've met either, so also no. That would just feel weird and kind of cannibally. Okay. Oh, are yep. we here? Yep. Uh, yep. Terrence is getting out of the car. As he's talking about not yep. wanting to associate chickens with people because that feels cannibally. <laughs> yeah, it runs out of the car. And he goes into Cornerstones. What are you getting angry at me for? And there is a woman leaving, and she is Asian, and she has her long hair tied back in a ponytail, and she's wearing a expensive looking suit and a coat. And she looks very intense. And you can see um, that her legs and one arm is very fine cyberware. What is that group of uh, terrifying people called? Star? Lone Star? Lone Star? Star? She's not Lone Star, right? I don't know. I was thinking maybe somebody got a job. Maybe. Uh, Terrence continues into the bar. I hope she's not Lone Star. Ren's starting to look quite concerned, Ooh. actually. Is uh, Lambert or Fennyman around? Yep, both are. Alright. Terrence goes over. Hiya! Uh, new customer? Yakuza. Y- oh, that's, that's fine then. fine? Better than Lone oh, Star. Well, 
depends on which side of the fence you happen to be on on their books. We're on the good side, right? Mm. We're on no side. Oh, that's dangerous. Which is good. It's it's good, but still dangerous. Um. She's one of their assassins. Oh. Sounding us out for our work. What kind of work? Don't know. All right. Huh. Well, our last job kind of exploded in our faces, so... Sort of literally. Sort of literally. Well, they're not the kind that accept failure. Ah. They wouldn't like us, then. But I did say we don't do assassinations. Good. I wouldn't want to sign up for that, so no. Um... Any word on the Impala? Yeah. You're looking at about three grand <gasps> for the rewiring, the key, the window, and a set of papers. Now, the set of papers, the only thing is, that's not going to be good online. If they do a check online, it's going to show the original owner. But if they don't, the papers will pass any eyeball test. Terence nods and looks over at Cypher. Cypher seems to be bouncing ahead to some music on her earphones. <laughs> She's got those things on Cypher? a lot more often these days. I, know. I mean, if it. Oh, she notices T- Terence looking at her and she pulls one earphone back. Uh, they say she- there's papers, but it's not good online. You think you can help with that? He's grinning at her. Her lips purse. She thinks. Looks like she's thinking. Her eyes roll up in her head. <laughs> I think I could do something for you. All right. That depends. Who was the previous owner? The guy who got disintegrated. Oh, so Mr. No Name. He had a uh, name. Yeah. We only had one name, though. Was it first or last? I had Topo. Yeah. Given the lack of... Because um, normally when, you know, people die... Uh-huh. Uh, th- things from the estate go, you know, go to either the family or to the crown. Um, in this case, I could probably set it up so that it was uh, made up as a sale, <laughs> and I'll just backdate it a few days ago. I don't think it would go to the crown here in the United States, but oh, you don't have a crown here. Very specifically, not. We got no. lots of queens and kings, but no crowns. There was kind of this whole thing where they're like, we don't want a king anymore. And then, yeah. There was a couple wars about it. Okay. Yeah. A while ago. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, that that sounds good, though, Cypher. Thank you. Um. Well, she sits down at one of the tables and starts typing away. Fennyman, mm. I'm about to ask you for a really big favor. I'm not sh- He narrows his eyes. Oh. Okay, here we go. <laughs> oh, he... You know I'm good for my favors, especially when they involve money. Uh huh. Um, I would like to borrow some from you, about twenty five hundred. And he looks over at Morticia, and she gives him a Becca frown. <laughs> and he's like, "Oh, all right. Oh, I, I didn't say no, did I? Yeah, all right." Terence looks like extremely relieved, and he's like, "Thank you. I'll get." the money back to you as soon as I can. You're very nice, Mr. Funnyman. Yeah, don't forget that, eh? Never have. So, Cypher looks up. Online records are fixed, except um, the only thing that would be questionable is the bill of sale. Yeah? What's it say? Uh, Sold to one... Well, I didn't know how much it was worth, so I put down 20 grand. The funny thing would be is if they investigated to try and find out where the 20 grand came from. Ah. Because you couldn't put it down as, you know... Uh, a cheap, you know, two grand car. Obviously, it's not worth two grand. I'm a sure, but it's worth about 20k. Terry's the expert. I mean, you couldn't have worked it out to be just a, a note that said he sold it or lost it in a bet. Lost it in a bet. <laughs> well, you, you want it to appear more yeah. legit, so... That's fair. All right. Um. I mean, you, you could have... 
yeah, depending if it, if it was worth a, a lot more than that. If, if it was worth more than the 20 grand, then s sure, you can certainly say that. But um, you don't want to... <laughs> I hear a chalk wall. Yeah. <laughs> Cypher's hearing chalk wall. Yes! <laughs> They're changing the special board at Cornerstones. <laughs> it's the scariest <laughs> sound in this game. <laughs> yes! <laughs> Um, all right. So anyway, it's all, all sorted. So Terence is going to give Fennyman 500 credits to cover the rest of the cost of the car. And he's going to tell Fennyman about uh, relocating himself and Cypher to near the cemetery. All right. And we'll have a car to get back here easily enough. And we'll call George when we need to be more covert, I guess. Yeah, fair enough. And they might have chickens. Okay. I don't know. Just felt like adding something. <laughs> well, if you're ever short on eggs, I guess. We'll always take eggs. All right. Um, so that possible job, was it only assassinations? No, they're just, um, what do you call it? Basically a meet and greet. They were just sussing us out. Yeah, that's fair. In the business, we've made some uh, inroads. Hmm. We got noticed. Could you tell what they thought? Not really hard to tell with them. Hmm. It's a double-edged sword, this. We weren't really that on the notice before, right? You know? But now, done some good things. Hmm. You get noticed. Bigger players. Risky. Because certainly to the Yakuza, we're expendable. <laughs> they definitely won't cover us like we try to cover ourselves. Yeah. And we're going to yeah. remember that. Yeah. But we also don't want to be owing them any favours. No, that would be bad. So the meeting didn't go bad, if that's what you're asking. But I wouldn't necessarily say it's particularly... Uh, well, I don't want to say it's particularly good, because that, that makes it sound worse than it was, and it wasn't bad, but... Mm. It was just something. Just trying to be careful. Good idea. And they have their enemies. You get two in in bed with one, you, you automatically become enemies to another. And that's something none of us need. But we'll see. Mm. It might be all right to do smaller things for them. Things that are important enough, but things they don't want to do themselves. Don't want to turn down work, but I don't want you excessively risking yourselves. So we will see. That's fair. Man, we need some kind of legitimate sidekick to bring in some small change or something. <laughs> Not a bad idea. Well, something to think about anyway. Anything you guys... Maybe we can get hired can here. Get hired here. I don't think Cypher would get along with the rest of this staff. Uh, well... <laughs> Is there anything you guys want to do? Hmm. Don't know. Um, no, um... I guess Cypher's probably going to head back to her apartment if nothing else is going to happen. Cypher, hmm? you can fake a bunch of stuff online and whatever. How hard is it to make somebody look dead? Um, lay on the floor and stick your tongue out. Uh, I'll take a follow of you. Yeah, yeah, that'll work. <laughs> sure. That's not particularly uh, convincing, Lambert says. Well, I'll add in the blood and everything later. Excellent, excellent. But do you want to die? Wouldn't mind it. At, at what are we least... talking about here? Are you talking about... File-wise, are you saying images? Because not images. That was Cipher's idea. That's Just why I'm asking. Because the thing is, Cipher, when life has left someone, it's very different than when they're not, and it's hard to capture that. So you're talking a file, records. Yeah. Isn't it easier to disappear rather than die? Eh, maybe. Just wondering. I like a challenge. Well, you'll need some form of ID or something. You, you can't just get through everything with not having anything. I have an ID. Yeah, but you'd need a different one. No, I wouldn't. But if you were dead? Yeah, I'd be dead, but I wouldn't be dead. Well, but if you're showing around the ID of somebody who's dead, it's going to ping. I wouldn't be. Lambert looks at Terry. I'm confused. Me too. Good. 
Look, my ID would still be fine. Don't worry about it. I was just asking. This hypothetical situation is very confusing, Ren. It's only confusing if you think I'm using a real ID now. I could erase you completely. But you'd have to give the ID of what you wanted to Yeah, that's what I'm... I know. That's what I'm thinking about. That's why I'm just asking. Possibility for if it's necessary. That's fair. Why would it be necessary? Better safe than sorry. To do what? To disappear? Yeah. Are you in danger? (laughs) I don't know. Are you going to decide I'm a vampire and try and stab me? Uh, well, you, but you're friendly. Why would I stab you? <laughs> Malice said vampires aren't friendly. Generally? I'm fine. I was just wondering. It's a thing to think about. Oh. That is all. To, why? Why not? Are you worried about the Yakuza sniff? <laughs> no. Well, that was a nervous laugh if I ever heard one. Call it idle curiosity. Okay, okay. Um, well, I've made people disappear before. Oh, good to know. But I've, uh, yeah, I've faked driver's licenses. And yeah, I mean, I don't need that. I've got that. Well, you just name it and I'll do it. Okay, if I need it, I will let you know. Okay, just let me know when. Yeah, if I... She's looking up at you. If I need to, I don't need right now. Oh, okay. So, not right now. No, not right now. Because I I got my laptop open right here. Okay, well, I'm fine for right now, but thank you. Is Cypher going to her apartment to do anything specific? No? Okay. No. Terrence is going to go to his apartment, and he is going to start working on some potions. Ah. And he is going to also go through his fabrics. (laughs) Looking for uh, red silk and some evening gown. Nice black materials. Cool. Mm. He also has a pair of very fuzzy pink mittens. <laughs> and I will uh, I will do that stuff later. <sighs> Ren's going back to her apartment. To do secret to stuff. To do nothing in particular. Secrets. No. <laughs> Everything no about secrets. that apartment is secret. <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> it's common knowledge. <laughs> it's common knowledge that it's secret, yes. Oh. <laughs> yeah. It's not secret. I actually look it up. She could try. And Oh, so it's not common And the number no, of not. the apartment is Cypher's actual age. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Only Ren knows. How do you know that? <laughs> so does Ren know her the number? No, of her she apartment? doesn't. She's wandering around town every <laughs> at the end of every yeah, day. Yeah, Ren doesn't actually have an apartment. She just pretends she does. <laughs> she keeps going to twenty one, and it's never right. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Ren knows where she lives. Yes. It would be strange if she didn't. All right. Shadowrun, a slice of life adventure in a dystopian future. Starring Becca as Terry the Mage. Raven Insane as Cypher the Hacker. Emily as Ren the Thief. Sarah as the Banshee Marla. And Ghost as the GM. The excellent Shadowrun is produced by Catalyst Game Labs. The Genesis rule set comes from Fantasy Flight Games. And many of the sounds and music comes from Sirenscape, which is an amazing tool for bringing more life to your game table. This has been a Crit Fail production.